Hi, my name is Josh Stewart, and I'm going to walk you through the process of programming the new Philips SpeechMic Air for use with Dragon Naturally Speaking version 10. The Philips SpeechMic Air is a programmable handheld wireless microphone geared and designed for use with speech recognition. Now, out of the box, these things are already programmed to work with each other. We're just going to go through and change the scheme to perform common tasks like controlling the microphone and playback, navigating through a template, activating the hidden mode feature of Dragon Medical, as well as transferring the text. Let's get started. In this step, we're going to program several of the buttons on the Philips SpeechMic Air. To do so, we need to open up the Philips Device Control Center. When I installed it, it put a shortcut on my desktop. Otherwise, you can go to Start, All Programs, Philips Speech Control. There you'll find the Philips Device Control Center. Let's take a look. Here we have the Philips Device Control Center. On the top, it's going to show us what active device is connected. So in our case, we're using the SpeechMic Air Classic, the International Edition. Now, the Philips Device Control Center is broken into four tabs. We have a Device tab, an Application Control tab, an Introduction tab, as well as a Troubleshooter tab. The first Device tab allows you to change basic settings, advanced settings. It allows you to reconfigure the buttons. You can do a device test, make sure that the SpeechMic Air is working properly, as well as upgrade the firmware. To the right, it shows an image of which device you have. As you can see, again, I have the International Classic Edition. Essentially means I have a slide switch. The second tab is the Application Control tab. This is where we program the buttons. Now, by default, it generally already has a default scheme. I remove that so that we can start fresh. We're going to come back to this tab. The third tab is the Introduction tab. This gives you a brief introduction about Philips and about the Philips Device Control Center, as well as the SpeechMic Air. So go ahead and read that when you get a chance. The fourth tab is the Troubleshooter tab. This page identifies common problems found with the Philips Device Control Center and with the device. So if you don't have a connection or if your buttons aren't working properly, go through here. It's going to give you a few scenarios and resolutions on what you can do to fix that. Otherwise, we'll go back to our Application Control tab. The Application Control tab is where we program the buttons. If we look in the middle of the screen, we see the word Profiles. Now, in the Profiles section is where your default profiles are stored. So again, when you purchase the software, it's already programmed to work with Dragon, naturally speaking. It's already programmed to work with Notepad as well as PowerPoint. Now, I deleted those profiles so that we can start from scratch. So this is where the profiles are stored. Down here shows you all of the different options on the speech mic. Now you notice there are two columns. There's a pressed column and there's a released column. This means you can program the buttons on the Philips SpeechMic Air to perform one action when it's pressed and another action when it's released. To program a button, we're going to click on the little box with the ellipsis sign in it. So you see we have a whole row of them here. We have a whole row of them there. We're going to begin by programming the stop button. So to program a button, we need to select the line. You may not be able to notice it, but whenever I select stop in this instance, it highlights it over here to let us know what action we're programming. Now again, because I'm using a slide switch, it just means when I flip it up to stop, I want it to perform a certain action. I want it to turn off my microphone in Dragon. So now that I have stop selected, I'm going to select this little box here. You see how it says Edit Operations for Button Pressed Event? I'm simply going to click the little box. It opens up an Edit Operation window. So this is where I give it a name, Microphone Off. So I'm going to name it Microphone Off. And then on our right-hand side, we have the ability to make things happen. So I'm going to click Add. So essentially, give it a name, press Add. The Operation Step Editor will appear. This is where we select the operation type. Now our options are Hotkey, 
text, start application, mouse button, drag and naturally speaking command, and delay. Notice as I hover over each option, it gives me a brief explanation about what it does, making the program user friendly, right? So we're going to go ahead and select drag and naturally speaking command. When I've put my cursor there, I notice I have the next illuminated. I can go ahead and click that. And it's going to give me a list of the available dragon commands. So let's open it up. And my third option down is microphone off and stop. And that's exactly what I want to happen. So I'm going to select microphone off and stop and finish. We're brought back to the edit operation. I can review it, make sure that it's named properly. I can see the type of command as well as the value. I'll select OK. So we've just programmed when I flip the switch up to stop, it turns my microphone off in Dragon. Moving down, I'm going to program the play button. And this will begin playback within Dragon, naturally speaking. So I'm going to select the button. We'll name it play. I'm going to click add again. This time I want a hotkey because there are hotkeys in Dragon. You're going to see in our next step how we're actually going to go in and readjust some of the Dragon hotkeys. So rather than choosing a Dragon naturally speaking command like I did the last time, this time I'm going to select hotkey. By selecting hotkey, my next button illuminates. A key code identifier opens. This is what button do you want to press. In our case, we're going to press P, as in Paul. Now you notice in the key code identifier, it selected P. It automatically put P in the key character. Now, I want it to do a control as well as a shift when I press the P. So essentially, it's going to be control, shift, P, and finish. Again, I have my name, I have the type, and the value. You see it's going to press Control-Shift-P, exactly what I want. We're going to click OK. We're going to move down to Record. The Record, what I want to happen here is when I press Record, I want it to turn on my microphone within Dragon. So again, I'm going to press the button, give it a name of Microphone On, Again, select Add. I'm going to choose Hotkey. Next. And I want M, as in microphone. Just like I did with the other one, I also wanted to press Control. So I'm going to make sure Control is selected. I'm going to make sure Shift is selected. And press Finish. Telling me again, microphone on, it's going to do a hotkey of Control, Shift, and M. Click OK. Move on to the next one. I want the forward button on my speech mic to navigate different fields. So I'm going to program the forward button next. So I'm going to move down a few. I highlight the line forward. I select the button. Give it a name. We'll call it Next Field. Press Add, another hotkey for me. We're going to do N, as in Nancy. You see, just pressing N populates it. Again, I want Control and Shift. Looks good. We'll click OK. Now let's move down a little bit. There's also a hidden mode feature available in Dragon Medical. Now I want to program one of these buttons to press and activate the hidden mood. So the idea